leading to order. Are there any uh, changes or just additions to the agenda as presented? I noticed that the it says review and approve minutes of meetings 20th, 27th, 3rd of February. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought we did the 20th and the 27th. We did. You did. Right. But I would like to address the meetings uh, minutes of the 27th, which I believe we adopted, the, but they have uh, blatant errors in them at some point. Uh, and that's the joint meeting. Okay. Um, any other changes or uh, additions? Um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk about the racial biased workshop that we finally have a date for and just the logistics of getting the word out and um, if there's uh, people we would like to sort of formally invite um, and also talk about um, uh, providing uh, babysitters during the workshop so both parents can attend and if okay. there's any interest in funding that. Anyone doing anything else? Nothing. Hear nothing. Uh, first item is approve the meeting minutes and as noted we've already adopted or passed the 20th and 27th as well as you believe we've passed the 3rd February 3rd. No, no, no. The 3rd is Okay. The third, those are, I was stating, these were the agenda items for tonight and the previous, the first two had been approved. Okay, so the only one is before us is, uh, what's the board's pleasure on February 3rd's meeting minutes? Will we approve the meeting minutes on February 3rd, 2020? We got a motion to approve, do we have a second? I will second that. Any discussion? Um, I wasn't here, so I won't recuse myself, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. So noted, Kyle recusing yourself. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And what meeting minutes are you referring it's, it's to? It's the 27th, um, and on page 8, where we were talking about the fund balance held by, held by the electric department, um, Meredith said, I asked whether or not there was a fund balance. Meredith said, yes, they do. Um, and thereafter, the uh, uh, Meredith's answer and Rosemary's answer is not in it. I would note that the uh, trustees have not, it was a joint meeting, they haven't addressed that. They are going to address those minutes, and I would suggest we defer you know, any further comments till we have what they, what they believe the uh, minutes uh, Corrected. We, I would tell you that Mike and I have checked them against the uh, the uh, visual record and, and have reason to want to change this to the extent we can, okay. or at least noted in the record. We've already approved them, so they're no longer in draft for the select board. Um, obviously, the trustees can approve something different than what we approved for the joint meeting minutes. But I don't think we can go back and address, change something that's already been approved. We can make note in this meeting that uh, you, some declaration of changes or, or what you felt wasn't appropriate in the prior meeting minutes or the 27th. But our opportunity to change those has already passed. I understand that. Okay. But I also understand that I'm going to intend to say that it's a big mistake and <coughs> people ought to look at the audio record. So noted. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Sir. I would say it was more of an omission than anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could pass it on to trustees. It has been. Okay. It has been. Anyone else? Anything? If not, Rosemary, you get the floor. The 
little over 60 percent. <coughs> Income side, we should be receiving our um, maintenance of grandless money at the end of March. Um, what happened with our SVP? They, they are combined with um, Central Vermont Council on Aging. Proud to that happen part way through the year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Same company last it was last year. I 
think that that should normally work out okay. This time it's, you know, just doesn't seem to be holding up quite right. Uh, it does see some pretty heavy use and a lot of corrosive material. So mm -hmm. uh, we might learn that its effective life is shorter than we anticipated, but for right now, I think this is a kind of a fluke that it needs to be replaced early. Uh, the recommendation is that we replace it a year early. Um, okay. Anybody got any questions, Brian? Okay. And not unless Jackie, were you here for Planning Commission report? No. Okay. Uh, I do have a little bit of news oh, you from the do. planning okay. committee. Um, I have received the um, the draft class four road report from the planning commission. Uh, so we should all get that over email. I just didn't have it for prepared for this meeting. It'll probably be a work session. Yeah. Subject matter. Yeah. Brian, do you know if they've sorted out who's going to be chairing that Not committee. that I'm aware of. Okay. Because when I reached out about them having a booth at town meeting in the back, um, Kim wrote back saying that they're really struggling with that. I don't know if this is something we should help them sort out <laughs> or, or what. But it seems like it's been at least a few months now. I, right? we've, uh, I've approached a couple folks and asked if they would consider taking it on. Uh -huh. uh, no one has definitely said yes or no to me, but the Planning Commission has not nominated a new chair yet. Right. Um, I think that we can probably help them at least with having this report that they've produced available, make this available for uh, town meetings so that folks can pick up a copy and read it um, and give them a little bit of space on, on it table somewhere but okay yeah I just would hate for it to go too long without someone sort of at the helm organizing meetings and you know so we wanted yeah. to take on the uh, right sewer district yeah come white sewer district okay uh, that's about all you got from the planning commission yes uh, let's see marks up at 725 so probably if you want to hit a couple of items in your okay. report. Uh, so the first one I want to tackle is uh, the highway access and work in the right-of-way policy. So this is one that we discussed last week. We were dissatisfied with a paragraph on uh, it's page two of this report. Uh, so if you're looking at the whole packet, it is page I believe page six, uh, but it's page two of the uh, policy. So, page six, page two of the policy. Sorry, page two of the whole pack. Uh, okay. Page two. Okay. Um, okay. Our <laughs> dissatisfaction was the second paragraph of section four uh, that. The, the advice we received from the League of Cities and Towns on legal review was that um, the paragraph that we had originally drafted for this was too permissive and uh, that it was grant it was giving up authority that we had uh, to maintain our right of way in uh, a manner that could be a disservice to us later, later on down the road. Um, but our concern was that we didn't want to get into administering um, you know, uh, routine activities of landowners maintaining their own property. Uh, that we didn't want to burden ourselves or homeowners with endless reporting and filing and, and fees or anything else. So uh, to try and manage those two concerns, uh, with a suggestion about what I have tried to draft here, which is uh, a new paragraph four, 
where we leave paragraph two, where we take a broad view of uh, what is our purview, and then spell out later on that there are certain activities that we consider completely permissible and do not require filing or permits. I listed a few activities that I know we don't have any interest in managing right now, uh, and this list can be amended more now or, or in the future. Uh, but I, I think that this is a pretty satisfactory job of kind of splitting the difference between the, our two concerns. Board thoughts? I'm okay with it. I, I looked up the statute and the statute says, you know, in, in one sense, you know, nobody's ever going to, the public isn't going to look up a statute. It's better to have a policy here. That's the only reason I can see to have this. The, the state basically said, you, you, you have the right to control your, uh, your right of way, and you can sell, you can say what you don't want to control in that. And, and that is what, what uh, the tact we're taking. Brian is drafted, and I think that's a good one because, you know, it, it's not their their driveways go across our right of way, so it's our property. But we don't want to meddle with that. They're taking care of it. It would be, it would be all the reasons that Matt was talking about that, uh, you know, selective enforcement, etc., would would exist. And so, you know, I see no. I think this is a good way of dealing. Makes sense. That was the only concern we had had before. That was the only concern that had been raised to me before. I'm satisfied with everything else in here. Uh, it provides updates to the uh, two major concerns that Brian Krause and I had, uh, which are covered in the appendices, the, the actual permit and the notice to proceed. Um, that that notice to proceed and then the issuance of the permit uh, will make things a lot easier for us when it comes to managing projects and overseeing uh, difficult projects and making sure that they get done properly. Mm -hmm. You know, so it basically requires, uh, right now we have a one-step process where somebody comes in, asks for a permit, we give them a permit. Um, and we don't have a good mechanism for kind of a back and forth of, you know, I like the sound of this project, but I'm, I have concerns about these areas. We can require a bond, but we can't, we don't have any real steps in between. Uh, what this does is we grant a notice to proceed that you can begin work on this, but we want to see the work completed. We want to review it with you. We want to be included along the way, and then we'll issue a final permit at the end. And for the board's information, your, if you come to sell your real estate, the attorney looking at the title will be looking for these permits to find out if you have actually access to your. Mm. So it's really good that we have a formal procedure and that it's followed and the permit exists. So I guess I'd ask the board to feel they're ready to adopt this policy and if so do we have a copy? We do have a clean copy. Clean copy. Uh, I'll make the motion that we adopt the highway access permit policy as printed. Good motion. Do we have a second? A second. Good motion a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for all your work on that, Brian. That was not easy. Yeah. Uh, with no objections from the board, I'd like to go back to the Planning Commission report. And uh, Kim, if you had anything that you wanted to report. Um, just that we did pass the Class 4 road policy in, and I don't know if you guys received it yet, but... Um, we have, it, just, it wasn't prepared for this meeting, but yeah. we have received it now. And, uh, Visioning 
um, what the sewer extension boundaries might look like. I don't know if I'm wording it correctly, but um, and some other members brought up some other issues that um, sounded interesting, and one of them was about the new marijuana law being that's sort of going through passage, and that would we as a town be interested in um, having input on where potential stores might go, and people talked a little bit about pro and con of even having a store in the town, um, so that's something you guys might want to kick around and see if that's something you want to move down to us or over to us. Um, and yeah, I, and my idea as a member was also just looking through the town village plan that we had created and going through all the bullet points of policies and how we get to those policies. Are we, t are we doing the baby steps that it takes to move forward on some of the things that we have in our overall plan for the building town? So, um, I guess we'll hopefully hear from Brian if, there's, if that this sewer thing is the direction or if he's open to other um, ideas or if you guys have things that are extremely important to you. Well, there was some concern expressed on you guys are struggling on naming a chair. Yeah, chair and members still need, I think, another member. And or, it, I, I, we didn't talk about, you know, making it come back down in number, if that's something that mm -hmm. is a solution to it. But I think, for me, the chair is just, it takes more technology than I have. I don't have the ability. I do the minutes and two per hour, and it's just, it's not my, Mm -hmm. My game. <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm happy to be the liaison or communicator or whatever it takes. It just, um, it, what, what I feel like we've lacked, we've lacked that layup person who's, you know, taking charge, rolling things forward, making sure the minutes are going to the right places. And we haven't had a secretary for probably over a couple of years. So it's something that maybe we should just um, chat with Brian and see if we can come. We have budgeted budgeted for that for the last number of years and certainly encourage you guys to get a meeting minute taker. Do we pub publish? I mean, is that something that we can work harder on by? Is that our responsibility as a board or is that part of your responsibility? I, I can help in any way. Um, the the uh, We just need to let Donna or Donna know when your regular meetings are. And if she can do it, if she can't do it, we'll find somebody else who can do it. Regular meetings are first Tuesday of every month, seventh Okay. So what is the struggle with naming a chair? I don't think it's naming it. It's finding someone who's willing to do it. Nobody we wants could, to. We can they name several people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's finding someone who's willing to take on the responsibility. Is there anything we can do to help? Good question. Yeah, I don't know that. Well, we could name someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's not our prerogative. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, Kim, who's running the meetings right now? Like, how's it working? Um, I've been sort of kind of uh -huh. my best this and everyone's been pitching in, and um, yeah, I, I, I sort of touched base with Brian and he helped me pull the agenda together and did that and um, yeah but it's a good question I yeah I feel like we haven't had uh, the connections maybe that we've had in, in my past uh, as a planning mm -hmm. commission member but um, I don't know if that's something that we could work on can we put it out to the public that there's a vacancy and uh, as a member and as a chair well we haven't posted advertising for the chair position yeah we've had advertising out for a vacancy on the planning commission but no uh, we've asked a couple of people if they would join uh, and try to invite members but how many uh Position openings do we have currently outstanding? I mean, we're going to have to post these after town meeting anyway. Yeah, I believe right now we only have one vacancy. Well, we have no. Uh, we're missing a constable. Oh, uh, 
overall, uh, we need at least one more constable. Uh, we have, and we need at least one more planning commission member. Planning commission, rec uh, committee, beautification, We could use more people in, in the rec committee. Uh, beautification, I feel like we've got quite a few. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. over full. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But that's something after town meeting when we have our organizational meeting, we've got all of those. Yeah, we can resubmit everything uh, and recirculate. So if you want to shake the tree a little, see if anybody falls out. Uh, Kim, help me out. It's yourself, Paul so Gordon. Who's on, who's on so far? Um, Charles. Greg Tatro, is it? Greg Tatro. You? That's it. And uh, Rob Rodriguez. And Rob Rodriguez. Yeah. And uh, David Butler Charles? is still a Did member. Did you say Charles? Yeah, Who Charles Kelly. Who are missing one until Dave's leaves and then we're missing two? Uh, I didn't, my impression was that Dave was not leaving the committee, that he was just no longer the chair. Yeah, if he's entirely done with the committee, then we would have uh, set, uh, an additional opening. Uh -huh. I wonder about the utility of soliciting for the chair when the committee would appoint the chair, and I would think somebody who we would hope somebody on the committee with experience would, would take the reins. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's a priority for you guys, figure out who's in the chair. <laughs> The first thing I'm going to do is draw. I know. Oh. The the short straw. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you hold them so you can file out. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome Mark Nielsen here tonight. Uh, this is the first, and planning on doing it every regular meeting is an opportunity to just give us a little brief update on what, some things going on at the school, and then if anybody has any things they want to get into, you, break, you guys can break off and go in the other room. But uh, thank you for coming, Mark. And thank you for the opportunity. Um, I think the last probably, couple of years has been brought to my attention more and more. I'm mean, not a great school board meetings anymore. They were all up on the hill and I sit with 1760 young people. And so you notice over time, not quickly actually, erosion communication between people and Johnson and the folks representing Johnson. So thank you for allowing me this time here. And um, everybody knows about our meeting we had last night. Uh, that was a fun time. Um, I guess the positive that came out of that, there was a number of really good ideas, a number of things we need to challenge a little bit more. Um, the school budget as it sits right now, 1.9 percent we call uncontrollable because there were a few folks who weren't happy with that word last night but it doesn't matter how you want to slice it we can't tell the state we're not going to do it so high park we can't tell them that their electric rates are too high um, there's different other funds that go along with uh, teachers contracts too aren't they be sitting in the middle of that meeting that negotiated session so i'm delighted to be <laughs> um, so, there were a number of issues we brought up last night. Um, for instance, one of the things I'm going to bring forward to once we get through town meeting, I'm going to find out if we can indeed, because we probably consume a fair amount of power from Hyde Park, um, can we challenge the utility rates that we buy from? I mean, Eric and I, I'm not sure who else, we used to get special rates from IBM with NMS. Power, there was so much power consumption that they had a special rate for Green Mountain Power for years. So can we challenge that? Um, so I'm going to ask that question and uh, see how much trouble I need to again. And um, a couple of other things going forward, there was some concerns. 
concern about the, um, the reserves that were set up, the HSA is for the benefits. Um, my buddy went to Palm for a show up last night, and it was fun. And um, we, got, we exchanged emails this morning, and I'm going to sit down with him probably next week. I know tax season is pretty busy for him, so. But I look at um, his thoughts. He's got some pretty decent ideas. It's just a matter of turning around into something productive. So if there is something there we can bring back to our business office at the school, we can change something to make the cost drive down or use the money more efficiently. And that's the way we need to do business segments. And although there's 17 of us on the board, maybe person number 18 has a better idea. So, so I guess I'm taking that point of view on what can we do to move things forward in that direction. Um, next Monday night we have an informational session. I'm actually going to look into, I'm going to suggest tomorrow night when I see Deb Clark, the business manager. Some people are not sure and know a lot about the, the function of how the money moves through taxes and through the state and the rest of that. So I want to see if I can't clarify that a little bit more for Monday night. That way, a 5.1% you know, tax, um, maybe that can be lessened if you file certain paperwork that maybe somebody doesn't. So that's where, we're, that's where I'm going to head off in that direction with that. Um, the last time I was down here, school busing was an issue. Um, it still is. I'm going to wait till after town meeting, quite honestly, because the next 10 days, nothing we do know that even Hyde Park and Johnson all have the same issues. Mm. So it's not just a Johnson issue, it's a several communities issue. Um, there's a bus company that just, I guess, went out of business up in Morristown. Mm. I'm very curious as to how that can help us out with the bus driver situation. And there's a few other little pieces. I was over talking to David Manning the other day, and um, he said that he had a bus available. My thing is, if I only one that's available with no CDL license required, then our real lot problem solved right there because the bus is like that around. So, this is there's still avenues to go, I haven't given up on it. Um, I wrote that to uh, a resident down here, I said, I haven't forgotten about your issue, trust me, it's still on the table. We just got to cross the bridge and see what else we can do to fix that. So, and I'm trying to think. My email address, I shared that with several people last night. Um, we're going to start an open dialogue. Um, some folks that um, I wasn't aware of that were still around um, that had been involved in the school system for a very long time with, in a superintendent type capacity. And they spoke up, and there was a lady that spoke up. I don't even recall her name. I sent you a note while we were sitting there. And yeah, she and I shared some. I'm going to pick her brain. I mean, there's, there's a lot of experience out there, and um, I don't want to go to waste. So, but Perfect. I'm having, having fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start maybe getting a little buzz out there that you're going to be uh, yeah, doing absolutely, this. Yeah, because I, I don't think it would be productive to have a formal school board meeting down here, although that idea has crossed my mind. I would rather have, if people are already coming here, you can go over to the other room. If anybody's got anything, my email address is on the website, please write me a note. And if I don't know you, we'll know each other because I'll come up to your place and I'll introduce myself. So we're all kind of in this together. And so. Good. so at this point, I'll provide the opportunity if anybody wants to break off and yeah, go absolutely. with Mark in the other room and talk school stuff. <laughs> Yeah, about tomorrow. It takes me about 15 minutes to walk down here, but I chose to drive down today. So yeah, I live right up on the hill behind Drew Fairbanks' old shop. Doug's mm -hmm. quite familiar. He did a lot of work for me, thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I have my granddaughter still, and she's going through school. Today's Tuesday, yesterday morning at 9.15, I was sitting in the kindergarten class reading a book. <laughs> Last year, I took a student out of, I don't know if anybody, you probably don't know much about me. Um, I work for Border Patrol. I'm an Intel analyst. And one of the things I have fun doing is if you have a cell phone, I can probably break into it. <laughs> I just tell you all the good news that you've got, even the stuff that you don't know about. So I took, I went to the vocational school last year, 
and I talked to the class uh, about if you take somebody 17 years old, they don't oftentimes think about what's going on. And I said, look, guys, you're the future. Uh, but you're you're going to be the one 10 years down the road that went beyond my select. You might make me make a decision, you know, to go on town. So, you know, kind of didn't thinking about that. I picked him up. I brought him over to where I work. Introduced him to everybody. Brought him back in what we call the den. Um, they have several really nice computers back there. That do some really cool things. And he got to actually, he got humbled a little bit because a lot of times at that age you um, you know quite a bit. So we showed him a cell phone of an individual that had actually crossed the border early to do another work. And um, we plugged it in. We let the computer do its work. And he got to see it. I mean, he couldn't read it, but we wouldn't allow him to do that because he doesn't have all the fun paperwork that I do. But we allowed him to see what actually went on in the legal process that he has to go through. Mm -hmm. And if you mess up in one place, the judge will throw it out. So that way he could see what was really going on in the world. So I got him back to school. And, um, so I have a vested interest in a lot of the school board stuff because I stay active and involved. So, Good. I'm always open to anybody's thoughts or ideas. Please do not hesitate. I do write back. I call people up and say, hello, how are you? Here's who I am. And you're now the chair, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good work. You've lived in town for 30 years, right, Mark? Lori tells me it's been 22. 22. Yeah. I've been up on the, lived up in Katie Wynn Trail Park in the Georgia Marisonda, and bought a piece of land, and um, we've been up there ever since, and we had fun in the driveway this time of year, and we can get our motorcycles out in the summer and ride around in the summertime. So, but yeah, I've, um, I want to see this town do really well. I want to see those little kindergartners that I read to, like I was telling um, our superintendent, I said, 13 years from now, somebody's going to be handing out high school ball. Hmm. So, I'm going to take care of them on the way. Hopefully. I was on it two years ago, and quite honestly, um, I don't have the patience for that stuff. Um, if I tell you I'm going to bring in a plan, <laughs> um, if you tell me you're going to bring me in a plan, you know, on these salary benefits, I'm not going to drive up there just to say, oops, I didn't have time to do it. So that really turned me off right off. And my personality type allows me to have a little flexibility within the system, I guess. But I know where, here's the, here's the end of the road, I'll help you make your pick and sign. So, well, that's, <laughs> you know, you, you got a budget that you pass, yep. or wherever it might be. You got a certain amount of dollars you're playing, and it doesn't matter how you want to slice the peanuts, I'm not going back to the taxpayers and ask them for more money once I hit that line. You do a great job as a teacher, I value you know, your position tremendously, but I also know the cost of living is in the area, salaries are in the area, the taxpayer is paying money. I know all those pieces as well. And um, so when I sit down, I'm quiet until I get in the back room and I say my two cents patiently. <laughs> so, yeah, to answer your question, yes, I got stuck with it again this year. They, they said, oh, um, we need an extra body and get a representative from Johnson. <laughs> so, tomorrow night's the night. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Okay. Thank well, Thank thanks you. for coming in. And like I say, Mark. anybody wants to talk to Mark about school issues, yeah. break okay. off. Brian? Okay. Uh, getting back into it, our next is the uh, update to the capital equipment plan. So, this is page. 20 of your packet or page four of the uh, capital budget and program. Mm 
And that's addressing the tractor issue, right? Yeah, so this, the addition is in paragraph one, two, th paragraph three under the highway heading. Uh, that's an additional, uh, that's a new paragraph and new addition to uh, the plan. And there is a deletion from the paragraph before it that uh, it, it, state, it used to state that we shared a tractor with the village. That's no longer going to be the case going forward. Uh, so I deleted the line that said we shared the tractor and added the paragraph. Uh, it says we're going to buy a tractor and the characteristics that we feel are necessary for the tractor. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, on this uh, capital budget uh, and program, we need to go back, we need to go through this and revise all of the highway department to public works uh, department. Uh, every place there is the word highway uh, needs to be removed and public works inserted in its place. Good point. Um, I'm just wondering because it does this plan only addresses highway issues it doesn't address you know a bigger public work but, but but the word highway department is no longer the highway department right yeah any it's reference the public to the department so that needs to reflect that in everything that we do going forward yeah. it would be more accurate uh, I want to check one One concern I have is the language of the article that was of the article creating the uh, the font. So this is page eleven, page ten, eleven, and twelve of this same document. Uh, article has amended and approved. Uh, the article is approved by the voters does reference it as a highway capital equipment fund. Well, it needs to be changed public works. It, we can't override the uh, voters. No, but it has to be, uh, has to be, well, if you have to go before the voters again, you need to do it because everything going forward has to have public works. We no longer have a highway department. True, but this is not referencing a department. It's refer referencing a type of reserve fund. For the high, just specifically for the highway. Uh, well, page nine, it says trade in value of the, the highway department places. You know, I think when you say highway department, you can say public works department. Yes. I think that there's a lot of places where we can just make a replacement mm -hmm. and have no change. Here, it's highway capital equipment. We could leave this as the highway capital equipment. The capital equipment for highway purposes of our public works department. Yes, exactly. There you go. Yeah. So our public works department does highway functions for us. Right. So we can still refer to the duties they, that the public works performs on our roads as highway. Because right. yeah. But you are also correct that it is, the department is not the highway department. Right. So. But I guess we have a public works department, but this is a highway uh, capital equipment reserve. So if we ever, for whatever future time, had to have a uh, capital equipment uh, fund for public works stuff that was outside of the highway, skate park maintenance or something like that, that would be another reserve fund we'd have to get approved by the voters or have the voters change our current highway capital equipment fund to also encompass 
everything. Right, I touched on that a little bit. I mean, I think it would be cleaner to do it that way, and that way we wouldn't have to worry about uh, doing something that might not be right. But I don't think it's a bridge we have to cross. Probably right now. Right. Yeah. So Brian, back to the tractor that we've jointly owned. What's happening to that? That is owned by the village. When I say it's I jointly see. owned, oh, I see. it's jointly operated. <clears throat> Got it. They want to trade, as I understand, down. So uh -huh. Yeah. And if anything, we would trade up. Right. Because it's a little uh, undersized for us. Okay. It, it's undersized for our needs. It's oversized for their needs. Uh, so it's just not working out very well for us both to compromise yeah. on uh, something that's not a great fit. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can I have a question? Have the monies ever been spent for things other than the highway department? No. No, we, we would be strictly prohibited from spending money out of this reserve fund on anything that is not highway equipment, and specifically highway equipment that's identified in this plan. We'd have to go to the voters and, and ask permission to change the terminology on that. Um, but again, it's, it is going to be okay for our public works department to spend this money on equipment that's for the purpose of highway maintenance. Mm -hmm. okay. What's the board's pleasure is with the changes? Uh, do you want to see another? draft with that language changed or are you okay oh, with, with all that? of the modifications of the where it references highway department yes every place where it says highway department i'm going to replace with public works department yeah, yeah, everyone to see it that way see so it cleaned up fair really so okay so other than yep. that is there any other concerns with it would you approve it otherwise okay okay thank you so i will make that fix uh, the next up is the Recreation Committee appointments. Uh, our Recreation Committee uh, is down on members and would like uh, would like to make uh, appointments of a few members that have expressed an interest. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm looking at uh, three, four, and six. We're talking about uh, recreation, beautification, and law enforcement committee would appoint representatives. And we're, we're going to be doing this in a couple of weeks anyway, right? After town meeting? Yes, all of the appointments. Yeah, I move we just table all the appointments to after town meeting and we can take care of them then. Okay, we have a motion to move the appointments, selections of the agenda our appointments uh, organizational meeting after town meeting we have a second yeah i'll make that second the uh, with a caveat that item six is on the agenda not to appoint members necessarily but just to discuss the creation of it and its goals and its timeline okay, okay. would we like to appoint uh representatives okay so that's your point at some later point we probably okay will. i'll back it up just go back and beautification well, yeah, we wouldn't be doing that tonight. Yeah. Okay, so you're changing your motion to just items three and four. Yeah, right? that's correct. And that's a second. Yeah. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, item five real estate conveyance. Sure. So I have the updated notice of intent to sell municipal real estate for the uh, 53 Kitty Wynn East. Uh, this is the one that we attempted to sell by auction uh, and had no takers at that meeting. So I have an updated, uh, you have a copy in your packet, but I've got an oh. updated. Uh, so basically what is it, to post it for a bid? Uh, it's to post it for bid and that we will open sealed bids on April 6th at 7 p.m. at our uh, first regular meeting in April. Uh, that gives us time to complete the required notice uh, for the conveyance of real estate. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, we discussed this that we'd have a minimum bid of 2000 and that's nowhere in this uh, notice of intent to sell. 
Okay. Was that the rest of the board's recollection? Did we formally vote? Yes, we did. We did? Did we? I mean, we can go back and check the minutes to be sure, Mr. Chairman, but I'm pretty well sure that we uh, discussed the $2,000 minimum debt. I just remember the drama of the process. <laughs> we discussed it, I remember I was here. You discussed it, I don't remember whether you voted on it. Because it was right before the auction. You had a couple of people that had been interested. Do you think, uh, you're the expert on this, do you think it's wise to have that? Well, we're going to be right back in the same thing here to the highest bidder. If somebody comes in and there's only one bid for a dollar, we've advertised it for the highest bid for a dollar. And so if you have the sealed bid option, uh, you're not going to be able to try to pull a fast one like you did last time by trying to change the rules and the select board come up with a minimum bid on the cuff. You won't be able to get away with that. You, if you have it this way and you advertise it this way, somebody comes up with a buck, they own it. They're the only one. If you want to take a gamble and let it go, uh, you can vote on it, but I'll vote against it. Well, when do we want to stop the bleeding? $2,000. Well, well, couldn't we... Oh, I see what you mean. Couldn't we put that $2,000 minimum into your notice? Yes, we got through that. That's what I'm talking That's about. It's not in the notice. Yeah. Right. So let's do that. Yeah. So what happens? I'm, I'm, uh, what happens if you get two bids identical? The highest you have two high bids. The first one comes in. Or first one. Yeah. Comes in. Yeah. First one postmark. Thanks. So I guess I would look for a motion to approve this conveyance with that stipulation of a minimum bid of 2000 required. So move, Mr. Chairman. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and second. Any more discussion? We have to, no. Well, we have to sign this tonight. Um, if we take a couple minutes at the end, I can okay. just make the change and print a okay. fresh copy of it. Yeah. Good. It, it's a simple change. Yeah. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And Nat, you want to talk about the law enforcement option? Yeah, I just I met with a um, uh, select board member from Su Susan Bartlett from Hyde Park and uh, Mike Davidson from Walcott. And um, so we're looking to create a um, law enforcement study committee, two members from each town. Um, to study law enforcement needs in the community and to evaluate option, options for sus, uh, sustaining costs. Um, and that's it. So I um, really just want to make sure with the uh, board that that's still, we still want to participate in that and that we're going to have, I guess, in our March meeting, hopefully we can appoint two members, preferably um, two members that um, uh, <coughs> you know, don't have a strong opinion, uh, a strong bias one way or the other against or for the sheriff, current contract. Good with everybody? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a great idea. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, Eric, Rebecca had a hand. Yes. Is the sheriff elected or is that a... He's elected, but we contract with two other communities for patrol service. The actual responsibility, um, the, st the state legal um, responsibility that the sheriff has in Vermont is actually pretty pretty small for each county. It's transporting prisoners um, between court and doing some court duties. But so sheriffs often will um, contract out for um, more duties than that. Otherwise, we wouldn't get patrol services in between. Them. Good question. Okay, all set. 
Vermont Planners Association Award. So the Vermont Planners Association is seeking their annual award nominees and Tasha thought that we might like to support uh, LCPC's bid to submit Seth for a nomination. And Seth has done a lot of good work for our community recently, so uh, I think that that's a good idea. I think we should. So just a... Uh, it'll be a support. letter of support that I'll, uh, I can send okay. on behalf of the board. Yeah. yeah. Is everyone in agreement? Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, yeah. it's really valuable. Okay. You want a motion? Yes, please. So moved. So moved. <laughs> we have a second? Second. Any objections? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Could I, after the fact, just clarify that so the, the motion was to write a letter of support for Seth? Yes. Okay. Get that, Donna? <laughs> she did. Okay. Uh, efficiency <laughs> Vermont. Okay. Uh, so you received a little supplement packet on Efficiency Vermont. Uh, Johnson is a targeted community, which means that... I've got a bullseye. <laughs> uh, that means that Johnson residents and the town are eligible for uh, some additional funds. Uh, for the, the rebates, existing rebates are uh, Johnson residents can receive bonus credits for them, so they can get a little bit more money back on installing qualifying products with uh, qualifying installers. Doug, it's a... It's not the one I'm looking at. No. This one here. Oh, it's underneath. Yeah. All right. I enjoyed reading what I was looking at. Um, so, we get some additional support from Efficiency Vermont uh, in the form, also in the forms of a dedicated community manager. So we'll have uh, a particular point person for contact at Efficiency Vermont. And they uh, were, I'm uh, sorry, they were unable to make it to our meeting tonight, but they'll make a future meeting. Um, so it's, uh, they'll be conducting a few educational and outreach programs. Uh, for residents here throughout the year. Um, we're eligible for home energy visits, uh, walkthroughs for businesses. Uh, businesses get bonus credits uh, above and beyond what they're normally eligible for. Um, you know that there's uh, additional incentives for landlords uh, and, other, and municipalities and nonprofits. We have taken advantage of this. Uh, if you recall, our Town Garage is, system is uh, in need of some uh, maintenance, repair, and replacement. And uh, Efficiency Vermont has, an expert from Efficiency Vermont has uh, toured the garage and has begun to write a plan for us. I haven't, they haven't finished it, so I haven't seen the new draft of that, but uh, we'll be eligible for uh, quite a bit of incentives if their plan works for us. Uh, so I have some high hopes for that. How did they decide we are uh, an extra need community for this? That I don't know. Um, Kim? I just wonder if it was the surveys that were out, because I know I've, I've been communicating a little bit to my reps about these guys. Um, I'm wondering if they will do anything going backwards in time to honor all these windows that are so beautiful and all the insulation that was put in. And I would assume that we as a town have receipts for all of that and it would be so nice if they would actually honor what they're off the top. We do have receipts for everything if they will honor it or not. Uh, I'd love to see that. Windows yep. are not eligible. Windows are not eligible. Nice. And I noticed it, it says, uh, the town and village cannot, quote, stack their bonuses for one project. Each will be awarded a, a, uh, a bonus for a project. If it's jointly on owned property, do they consider that a stack? Uh, what they would consider a stack, if I'm understanding it correctly, and again, uh, not, 
I don't, I, I don't understand everything about their program, but uh, what I think they would consider a stack is we did a jointly owned project like on this building or something, and then we asked for a credit for installing the windows, and then the village also asked for a credit for installing the windows. But they would not each, they would not give each of us credit for the same project. But that we could ask for credit on a project that we completed as long as the village didn't claim the same project. Okay. No, I, I'm saying he, he's asking a question about that. Uh, yeah. So this is just informative for right now? Uh, there is one action piece. Uh, they do need a town liaison. Um, and they've asked if I would serve as the town liaison. I think that sounds great. <laughs> You've got lots of time, right? Yeah. I was afraid they want a board member. So Jenna's promise would probably they're a nonprofit. They uh, are, would be a great uh, basis to talk to about this, especially with the major renovations they're doing oh, yeah. on the Barrows building. There's tons of uh, improvements that they could make there, and they should see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Would, that, would that take care of? Is it only eligible for one one upgrade or whatever it is? Would that negate any other building being done? No. Uh, as again, we'll, we'll have a rep an actual representative from Efficiency Vermont at a future meeting. But from what I understand it, the limitation on this is uh, for individual groups that the so town the can go for one. On this Historical Society. Mm -hmm. The Historical Society and the town probably could apply to the same because the Historical Society could apply as their 501c3 nonprofit and the town could apply as the town. Um, but the 501c3 owns nothing. Yeah, so it may not qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, that would get so, it. We'd really have to sit down with a person from Efficiency Vermont. And, so we don't know if there's limitations on how many projects would be approved in this community. I don't believe there's a limit on projects. I believe there is a limit on requesters. So that we would be limited, the town would be limited on how many projects we can ask for uh, the additional bonuses on. But if the town asks for one, it's fine. If the town asks for one and Jenna's Promise asks for one and you know anybody else can mm -hmm. ask for them, but there's not a total number that can be asked for the, from this community, is there? I don't believe so. Okay. I, I think the only limitation, as I understand it, is on... Each person can only ask for one, or each and group. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is an additional 10,000, so this is over and above all the other <laughs> energy efficiency things that they do. Yes. So, but this 10,000, is this the maximum, which is additional, that... You know, some they might give one for five, one for four, and one for one, and then that would use up that ten thousand dollar additional. I don't believe so. I believe that it is ten thousand dollars for each request. Oh, no kidding. On page four, it says how many projects can be used the bonus incentive for, and it says. I believe that's how it works, is that it's one project per request. Not that we as a town get to pick one project anywhere in Johnson, and whoever makes the request is it. I believe that it's we each get to ask once. Yeah. But we're going to need <laughs> the expert here to... Yeah, it does say this is a one-time bonus. can be used on a single project. But the, the title there, it says Municipal Bonus Incentive. But I'm looking under the one for nonprofits. Oh, this is page four. Uh, there's a nonprofit bonus incentive. So we should probably get a handle on some of this when that person is at our meeting. It strikes me that 
you know, the business owners might want to be here. They may want homeowners be here. You know, th yeah. th this, is, this is something yeah. that you, you know, She's, we need to publicize the meeting yeah. so the people who could benefit from the information will be here. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's planning to come to a Johnson Works meeting in the near future also. Yeah, yeah. yeah she wants to yeah. be present in the community. Yeah, she's reached out to me quite a bit, actually. I uh, could not make tonight's meeting. Yeah. So what we need to do is name a liaison. Yes. And you volunteer. Yes. Thank you. So does that need to be formalized in a vote? Um, yeah, but would. It's for its pleasure. I move we appoint Brian Story as our liaison to Efficiency Vermont. Okay, motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion, second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, board priority planning meeting. Now you want to just express some of your concerns? Can we go back one thing to that? I wonder if NVU is qualified or I believe that they would be a qualifying organization also. They probably have projects and buildings. Yep. Vermont Studio Center for sure has. Yep. Uh, and then Vermont Studio Center, uh, you know, we toured one of their buildings today really? and they, they uh, make pretty good use of the credits available. Uh, okay. So I think that they would really appreciate if there were mm -hmm. bonus credits available. So yeah, I just uh, wanted to put a plug in. We, um, you know, it was October. We had our la our first pr um, priority planning meeting, um, which seemed to go pretty well, I thought. Um, and we talked about revisiting it, revisiting all those priorities, and um, doing it again in March. So I just wanted to put a plug in to make sure we're all thinking about that for March. Did you were you thinking about doing that at the organizational meeting? I was wondering because our organizational meeting usually doesn't take. Mm -hmm. half hour or whatever so in fact we need to make sure we warn that meeting too sometime prior yeah we will oh. uh, it'll be March 4th I believe Wednesday I'll, I'd have to check my calendar I'd hate to quote a day on that but it's the, the Wednesday after town meeting town meeting is the, the third. third yeah so yeah March 4th okay now that's the next day after town meeting yeah right now we're gonna want to do that because we if we add uh, 11 on to town meeting discussion, we can be there all day long. The priority planning, we did the bulk of the work already. Yeah. Uh, so I think that it's a, I think it would be a manageable amount of time to do at that meeting we, in addition to our We're just gonna talk about the priorities that we developed that special right. meeting yeah. and maybe make some adjustments Maybe some will float up, some float down, maybe a couple new ones will come in. But yeah, I don't see it taking an all night. We're not going to paste them on the board like we did last time. No, again, no. Right? no. no. no we've already got it. We can do it on the computer or, or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking maybe an hour or hour and a half. Okay. As long as we're not looking at three hours or something. No, I, I think it would take the bulk of the meeting, but I don't think that if we would need to. Uh, I think if we could do it on a, a day where we had a short meeting like that one, we're, okay. we're just making a couple appointments. Yeah. Doug? I, I think we ought to think about, for, you know, I understand what we did for priority planning. I think that we ought to ask our, our committees what their plans are for the year, what they hope to achieve in the year. You know, so Rec Committee, Historical Society, I, um, Tuesday Night Live it might be an easy two sentence thing, but I think that getting them to target might be useful. So maybe after our organizational meeting, we put out this request to all the committees. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Have them go through the same exercise? Well, have them say, we would like you to come in and tell us what your goals are and where you're headed this year. Because I don't think they tend to do that. You know, I think they have a meeting and, and, and I, I think it's really useful to chart a course. Maybe it's a good discussion for our priority meeting. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea because some of these committee, you know, just to also show interest in what, you know, just that we, we care, we're interested in what they're doing, what they're thinking about, I think. We do. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, uh, anything else on that board priority plan? If not, moving on to working communities planning grant. So, uh, we were selected as one of a few communities uh, to get the working communities planning grant. Uh, as part of a coalition uh, led by Capstone Community Action and uh, the Mobile County Planning Commission, uh, Johnson being a major participant in this. Um, this is really uh, pretty huge. We, we're, we're receiving a significant pot of money to do planning, and then there's going to be a second round for implementation grants. The focus is going to be on uh, employment and jobs. Um, so what can, what are we gonna do about uh, employment readiness? Are there activities we can take to increase readiness? Are there activities we can try and tackle about transportation, housing, like it's, a, it's an opportunity to take a pretty broad brush, but we're going to have a few sessions where we narrow the focus on our planning uh, to a few things that are implementable and actionable and then we'll take that for the implementation grant um yeah it's a nationally competitive grant and we are very lucky to be able to take part in it um so i am going there's going to be three uh pretty long work sessions on this uh, i'm going to one in march uh, Duncan Hastings, as our representative to the Memorial County Planning Commission, has volunteered to take one of the remaining two, and uh, Duncan and I were thinking that a select board member might be a good representative for the uh, third meeting. So if a select board member can take either one of these two, that would be... Maybe somebody who had Planning Commission experience? <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. I don't you remember don't anything from that. <laughs> I'd be interested, actually. You would? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so you, I, and Doug will talk and we'll okay. work out specifically which day and location works for you. Uh, you know, I can give up the one in March uh, for an alternative. Uh, I okay, we'll just have to March look at is the closest one. Oh, just, okay. That's one that Duncan definitely can't do. So. Okay, just send me the dates and I'll, okay. I'll you know. Just wondering, because it is about planning and it is about Johnson, is there any way that we can create a focus on um, filling in empty buildings and, and making that tie into the jobs? Because if we were to find um, the, 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 the tricks of finding the developers to develop our industrial or geo property and find the people to fill in the buildings, then they would have jobs. Yeah, uh, I think that attracting employers is going to be, it's a focus of this that I'm very interested in. It is that, um, you know, we have some workforce readiness issues, but we also have uh, some issues with uh, a lack of local employment. Uh, you know, people needing job, people, there's a lot of work to be had in some other communities. So that could be a transportation issue, but it's also an issue of uh, bringing some of those jobs more locally. Uh, so I'm interested in, in both sides of both sides of that. Uh, but again, it, it is it. We want to make sure that Johnson's well represented in this, but it is not a. It's not led by us. It, it is led by the county planning commission. So we are one of we're part of the conversation, but we're not the sole focus of this. But you said it was national, right? It, it is a national so conversation. For me, the, a piece that I would love to get brought back to Johnson is where how do communities bring those entities into their community to create that business? So, you know, how do you find the developer who says? Wow, we want that land. We want to build this on it. We want, you know, just and, or we want that building. We want to turn it into. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't know what, what, how people, how that manifests, and I would love to see it manifest here. <laughs> so, 
how is the represent also the representation from other towns or other agencies in, in this? Uh, uh, for municipalities, we have uh, uh, this, our select board, you would vote to send me to these meetings and, and to make us an active participant in this grant process. Mm -hmm. And uh, that commitment has led to us having a greater municipal representation than most of the other uh, committee or communities in Lamoille County. So it is county-wide, but there is a focus in Johnson on this. And Capstone with Greg Stefanski's hat was yep. guiding this? Is yes. it still on it? Yes. Okay. That's another asset we have for helping it. But uh, Johnson Focus is an active member of our community is uh, leading that. So he's very familiar with our, our needs and welcomes our participation. Okay. Good. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for volunteering. Yeah, no, I'm very interested in this. Anything else? Uh, not on that. Okay. FEMA. All right. Uh, DR4474 is the official name for the November 1st storm event. Uh, so it's the <laughs> Halloween November 1st storm. Uh, is that. So you'll, you'll be seeing that uh, letter number designation quite a bit on paperwork as we're going forward. Does DR signify something in particular? It's just a... Uh, I think DR stands for disaster recovery. Mm. Okay. <laughs> We have submitted a uh, public assistance request for the storm event. Uh, it is in process. Uh, we are targeting. Um, it's going. The, the we have a phone call coming up towards the end of February where we'll have kind of our best opportunity to start bringing up the uh, kind of the particulars about the storm event. That we're making a public assistance request. But we're also making a further request for not just damages, but we want mitigation help. Uh, so this is the 406 mitigation, I believe is the designation that we're gonna be seeking, uh, which will help us with uh, storm events. It looks like the Rocky Road, Scribner Bridge area, uh, meets the requirements for the 406 mitigation. Uh, so that is kind of our, our target for this. Uh, we have an existing plan that outlines options and rec makes some recommendations about how to uh, deal with the that intersection and uh, uh, kind of repeated flooding area. Um, and so this also, before we have this phone call and before we go too far down this road with FEMA, is a good time to have a little bit of a discussion about what our options are for addressing the washouts on uh, Rocky Road uh, at the, the foot of the Scribner Bridge. There are, from the, the plan that we had drawn in 2013 uh, to review the situation, they made four recommendations. Uh, the first three were uh, move the house, move the road, or move the bridge. Those are logistically and cost-wise very prohibitive. Um, but if we're ever going to do anything serious about those, like you know, we there, there was some discussion, not all that serious, but some discussion about uh, possibly removing the bridge. If that's something we're serious about, this is the opportunity that we would want to take advantage of that. This is our opportunity to uh, you know, receive some assistance for a really major project that that would uh, take. So I really wanted to bring that up to the board of if we're serious about this, this is the time we should have the discussion and make a commitment to uh, either maintaining Scribner Bridge or removing it. And what are you guys' thoughts? I had sent that out in an email. Um, <coughs> Do we want to put that out there and solicit input from the voters for town meeting on the options that we have? And well, tell us about your meeting you had in Montpelier. 
I was down in Williston. Um, Excuse me, Williston. Yeah, I was with the FEMA folks. It was very encouraging. They were very optimistic on this uh, Scribner Bridge area being eligible for the 406 B or 406 mitigation money. Obviously, there's a process we have to go through, but as part of that uh, plan, the consultant's plan was a, a few different options that we could do the what do we call it? The embedded, I call it embedded swale, that where water would basically a place, an op, a place for the water when it comes up in the river to just go right around the bridge and go right back in the river and continue on and, and be very minimal damage. We could, uh, you know, as soon as water drops, be back into crossing mm -hmm. through the bridge. That's an option. That's Certainly a price tag that comes with it, it'd be a community match. Um, we could put the road back the way it was. That's about a $20,000 cost. FEMA would probably pay for a, the majority of it. There is a community match. Or the other option was simply removing the bridge as it's a loop road. It would not impact anybody having you know, access to their property and stuff. Um, and because why would you remove it? One of the main reasons is uh, because of the narrow mouth that it constricts the river. Um, and I did, when I provided testimony down to the uh, Senate and House Transportation Committees, told them about the situation we have there. Um, certainly got their attention when I talked about removing the covered bridge. That was in Mount Bay. Hmm? That was in Mount Bay. That's what I thought you were going to be talking about, not the other deal down in Wilson. Yeah, but the FEMA people were very much aware of our Scribner Bridge area. They had pictures from prior floods, so they they were very aware of that place and the washout that we've been seeing there reoccurring. Um, that's why they were uh, very optimistic about it qualifying. Uh, my testimony to the uh, Vermont House and Senate was more along the lines of if we decide to keep the bridge, uh, there's money that's going to have to be invested in that bridge to refurbish it. And, uh, you know, that's where we'd be looking for help. What was the response? Just, keep oh, <laughs> you're not talking about just any bridge, you're talking about a covered bridge. Right, exactly. I was going to ask you if this Well, funny you say that. I recently read, in order to remove a covered bridge, you need the approval of the governor and the historical preservation group, or I can't remember exactly what their name is, but. Formerly Paul Bruner. What's that? Formerly Paul, run by Paul Bruner. I, I don't know who it's from. There isn't a whole lot original on that bridge. No, but still to remove it. Yeah. Well, they put that The state owns that one. The state owns that bridge? Yeah. That was originally where the wrong way bridge is. That one and the double wide bridge um, that's down at Shelburne Museum. Those two were. Uh, oh, so that bridge was part of the double bridge? Well, the double no. Bridge? The no. double bridge was over Lamoille. That little bridge was over that little Brewster stream, that or, or, or not Brewster. Brewster. Yeah, whatever that stream is, it was a, it, they, apparently when they put the wrong way bridge in, they rerouted that little stream, so it intersects with Lamoille above the bridge, and it used to do it below the bridge, somewhere. I understood that there was a, somehow a condition that they replaced that bridge with the landowner or something, they just swap it But when they moved that stream, it, it blocked the farmer for having access to their field and so they gave them the covered bridge to get maintain their access but they had an agreement they would always own and maintain the state would own and maintain that bridge and that it was a wise decision on some past farmer to yeah. sign that line <laughs> I, I think we ought to bring it up what, 
knowing what happened with, with the uh, School Street Bridge, I think that we ought to bring it up. I'm personally opposed to getting rid of the bridge, but mm -hmm. I think that uh, we ought to ask the public what they what they think. Um, and uh, take it from there. I, I think our history is important. Yeah, I agree. So you guys think we should post it? Uh, I don't see a downside to doing it. My um, my preference, having read the report and all the work that they did on the, the low water crossing, the uh, planning and the engineering that they put into that, that would be my first choice is to is to go with the low water crossing, especially at that this point with FEMA being able to help us out with it. Yeah. Um, that would definitely be my my first choice. I don't ever see any problem with asking the public what they how they feel about it, but. I agree with you. If it was solely up to us and, and we wanted to do it, I, I would say let's go with the low water crossing, let's do the 406. And, but, you know, I, I think sometimes it's useful to have the public know we're making, we're consulting them about choices that relate to their money and their history and what do they want. Uh, I'd be willing to vote just for the low water crossing. What we have to our benefit now is that we have the low water crossing on the table as far as being financed. That's right. Before we did not have that and we were trying to look further out um, trying to save the town money. So uh, if we have a position so we can get this low water crossing, I would support that myself. I understand we'll still have to invest money in the bridge. Sure. Right, but you know, it's, uh, it, it wouldn't hurt uh, to have a, some kind of an analysis on that bridge to see what it's going to cost to fix it up too. Because really the only good thing on that bridge right now is a roof. Okay. You know, so uh, we need to look well, into what it's going to cost to fix that bridge. It is structurally sound and the abutments are very solid. It's not going anywhere, but it needs a lot of work. It needs work. Yeah. Kim? We were joking about just getting into the state, but maybe that's something, if, if, if you can give them that choice, either we take it down or you take over the maintenance. Uh, it is too short for the state to take over. <laughs> too, yeah, short. too short. <laughs> Good thought, though. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Fast has a real strong interest in that bridge. It's one of their only uh, river crossings for the Guion. Um, and uh, even though it's not an essential bridge for transportation, it is. It does serve as a useful a detour and uh, yeah. So, sites it's a tourist destination. Well, you know, somebody <laughs> seemed to have found about $40,000 yeah. to fix a couple of culverts up by the McClure Farm on the railroad. So maybe somebody can find some money to fix that bridge too. And actually, come to think of it, speaking of the um, draw of tourists, I see quite a few people with out-of-state plates pass by my house. <coughs> they'll go up and they'll turn around well, far be before mm -hmm. they get to that bridge. If we had a sign there that said historical bridge, you know, on either yeah, side, that would be coming up some, some kind of yeah, because wondering really? where it is. So that's a group okay. that just mm -hmm. goes around every yeah. covered bridge in the uh -huh. state and yeah. looks at them. Uh -huh. Whatever. That's awesome. Syrup and covered with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I told my mom to go to school in Vermont, and they're like, oh, maple syrup and covered with <laughs> That's our reputation, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so if you uh, see that on front page form, we'll be spread. Uh, front page form. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this account on your flat chat. We'll see if anybody brings it up. <laughs> Including Eric, are you, you you forbidden to bring it up? Oh, I won't bring it up. Okay. I'll say, hey, Nat had this great idea. <laughs> 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 That'll be about in the yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah.
Yeah. Uh, they waited yeah. somebody to look at it and see what's going to cost to fix it, though. Yeah, that's when the caffeine uh, I, I'm, I know Brian's indicated <laughs> it needs quite a bit of stuff. It needs quite a bit of work. I'm interested in applying for a structures grant uh, to do a study. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we, first of all, the state won't give us enough money to do the work until we complete a study. And second, when I uh, asked for a cost estimate, uh, they said it was $5,000 to do a cost estimate. <laughs> so you think you might be able to find a grant out there? I'm thinking I can find a grant to pay for the cost estimate, to get an estimate and a work mm -hmm. plan together for this. And then we'd have something to go forward right. to yeah. some financing opportunities. I, I put a I also put a request out this week for um, other communities that have done recent covered bridge repairs, so I can start working on a ballpark of what did they pay, uh, and kind of use a checklist of what did they do, what did they pay, uh, so I can start getting a better ballpark. Cause this will never be ready by town meeting. No, no, no. so. It'd be nice if we had, you're going to open up a bunch of can of worms without really not much of an answer for anybody. But we sort of, I mean, we, we sort of need the, uh, the, what the voters feel or think because whether we're going to go forward with the low water crossing or not, which we've got to start working on that now, even before we'll have the information on the bridge. I suppose there's no sense to put a low water crossing in if you take the bridge down. Well, that's true. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, I mean, I, I was uh, discounting yeah, taking it, taking the bridge out by going with the mm -hmm. low water crossing. So we're just going to forget about taking the bridge out. Just do the low water crossing. I don't, I don't see what the but, big, big discussion would be about that. We haven't gotten approval yet for low water crossing either. But we have a good chance that we will. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't exactly stop a washout, but what it would do is it would dramatically reduce the amount of material that is removed from the roadway and ends up in the river. So it would just lower the roadbed and more of the roadbed would be made of larger pieces so it wouldn't wash out as easily. It could be hardened and it provide a safety valve. Yeah. So it would actually be designed to allow the water to do that instead of the way it is now, we fill in about four or five feet of you know, gravel and the water comes up, breaks the bank and it just washes it all out. It'd be designed to allow it to go through there. The but all the, go ahead. The throat of the bridge is too narrow so it can't, hand, can't let the water through that needs to, so it goes where it chooses and wipes out the road. Previous repair many years ago, there was a lot of big slabs of concrete that were placed low, and all of those were still in place after the event. So that was the hardened area. So, okay. Okay, uh, light industrial park. Uh, Seth and I have done some pretty good work over the last week. Uh, the grant application is going in uh, very shortly for the uh, Economic Development Authority money. Um, with Seth's help, we adjusted the budget a little bit. Uh, of course, that means the budget has gone up a little bit on what we expect the cost to be. Uh, but Seth felt that my estimates on uh, final engineering were a little bit low, uh, and there's also his own time uh, as a commitment there, and following that grant, he's going to help us with uh, matching and gap financing. Uh, so there's going to be a decent amount of work for Seth in there, so that part of the budget went up too. Uh, but the, the application is moving forward rapidly. And that'll be in. Uh, I hope to have it in by the end of this week. Wow, good. That's right. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, it'll be in, in very soon. And then the uh, timeline for this pot of money moves pretty rapidly. Uh, it's like a couple series of like 30 day conferences uh, where we'll move.
move through it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'll, it'll move fast. Any uh, greasing of the skids that we can do to help it in our favor? Or? Not too much at this point. Uh, we've got a pretty good shot that we've spent a lot of time leading up to the application in close consultation with folks at EDA. Uh, so, you know, fingers crossed, but I, I think that all the work that we've put in about, you know, making ready for this grant application and all the, the conferences and phone calls that we've had with uh, Matt, I can't remember Matt's last name, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. our contact at, at EDA and his office, I think all the prep work we've done about working through every step with them so that they know where we're at, they know what our thinking is, they can offer comments as we go. Good. I think we're in a really good position. Good. Good. Um, you know, this is the, we haven't submitted and been denied all these times, but by working through this with them, it's taken us several months to get ready to put in an application, but this is an application that they know and they're familiar with and every question they've had has been answered and adjusted for. So I have a high confidence in it being successful at this point. Fingers crossed. Keep our fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. I'm certainly looking forward to the day that we get our money and we get it uh, the work done and we have our first business in that way that uh, these naysayers that uh, cost me several times a month on the street talking about what a foolish thing it was and then maybe they will be quiet you get the last laugh okay uh, uh so you, you've received the uh county sheriff's department report yep. by email um uh, report, Nat, do you recall if the whole board saw the report that you had requested for our, for town meeting? I don't think so. I just got that today. G, you got that as well? I, I didn't get it, the response from Roger's office, but I saw your request for that. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so around June, to June, July last year, um, I sent around to the board a uh, PowerPoint presentation that the Sheriff's Department had put together for us on just a summary of what they'd done for the first six months. Um, and I asked them to update that for all of 2019. So they've done that now. I just got it this morning. Um, so I've got a PowerPoint presentation of, you know, all of, you know, sort of summary of all of their activities for the last year. Um, and I, I'm thinking of actually amending it a little bit and do and putting that up on a screen at town meeting and going through it i think that might be valuable if we have that technology i think we will but i'll, I'll double check with uh, the school and make sure that they're prepared for that or if we need to bring something yeah we have a projector yeah made, we do so. yeah and or a table in the back if it doesn't work out for that yeah yeah, it, it was a really good presentation that they made for us this summer, and uh, yeah. yeah, Matt had the great idea of asking for an update for it. So I, I think that's going to be a really good report we have for their uh, activities in 2019. Yeah, I'll, I'll forward that to everyone. Mm -hmm. Didn't we have a request that uh, there be a projection of the, when we're going over things at town meeting? I don't remember. Okay. Okay, all set on that one. Um, before we go into executive session, why don't we take up the racial bias, and then if there's any other old business. Okay. Uh, so the uh, racial bias training is. We have a final date for it. Everybody's committed to it. We've got the location committed. Everything's looking good for. Uh, Saturday, March 7th. Yes, 12 to 3. 12 to 3. Thank you. Um, we'll be at the gymnasium at the Johnson Elementary School. Um, there is 
some interest in providing babysitting. Uh, so this would be qualified babysitters who obtain the certification and everything else. Um, would the town be willing to donate some money to help pay the babysitters or? It's like, is that the same ones that are doing town meeting? Yeah. It's different. What well, it's, it's, um, I've got two lined up for town meeting and two more that are willing to, to do, uh, this workshop. Okay. Um, so I was, you know, they, they're what thinking they $10 an hour each. So for three hours, Cheap so like yeah. 60 bucks or so. Totally. totally. Yeah. yeah. I just think it's an important thing to, you know, I know a lot of parents that would like to come, both like to come and I think it's just a great, good thing to offer. Do we need a formal motion or is it? Um, no. no. Rosemary, you don't think so? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. This should be all announced to a town meeting day too. Yes, yeah, so that's the other pieces that I really want to emphasize is we really need to get the word out um, quickly and in a variety of ways. I think there should be a press release in the News and Citizen, it put in the events section of the paper, um, definitely a, a front porch forum post, Facebook post, as well as in a, you know, you can do the event that we've, I think, talked to you about. Yeah. Um, Basement medicine? Basement medicine would be good. Um, and then all- The Jaguar Journal is- Yes, uh, I can do the elementary school, but we need to I create- I already a, got that one. Oh, good, okay, so. Front yeah, Front Porch yeah. Forum, yep. Um, and then I think it's important just to sort of formally ask different organizations, to, I mean, obviously our town and village employees, um, to let them know. Um, even the folks at Laraway, some of their staff might be interested. Um, also, staff and teachers at Johnson Elementary School or our school board, um, folks at MVU, professors and staff. Um, and then um, I think the Sheriff's Department as well mm. would be a really good one to ask, especially since we've had some you know, events, disturbing events that have happened um, here in Johnson that could have been handled better. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of places I think we should reach out to and, but do it soon. So um, I'm happy to do some of it if we want to delegate or divide and conquer, but um, yeah, that's my well, I'll send it in priority. Right. I'll send an invite to the sheriff and uh, to Chris, who's uh, head of uh, patrol, and uh, Detective Kirkpatrick, who is a, a resident of Johnson, too. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, <clears throat> Brian, what do you. I'm what? already, I'm working with the elementary school already. Okay. I'll step that up to. Um, include the school board as well. Okay. And uh, NVU, I can do too. Okay. Um, you want to get Lara White as long as I'm doing education? Sure. Okay. Um, what about uh, the News and Citizen like press release type? I, and maybe even to. Sue, if she wants to. I, I think we should in our get into Sue. Um, I think we should do something in addition to Sue, though. I think there should yeah. be a formal little article. Uh, I can reach out to Tommy and see if we can uh, kind of corner him for a little talk about this. I don't know if he'll want to talk to me or who, but I might ask if you or. or Jackie, you, you were kind of a community member that was really active in this. So if you might be willing to sit down with him, that might be good. I'm not sure who he's gonna wanna to talk to or how he's gonna to wanna to arrange Yeah, it. I was thinking even our, the blurb that we've come up with, just submitting that and that yeah. being the press release, you know, so it's kind of I, consistent information going out there. Yeah, I think I wanna do that, but I, I, I think it might. Mm -hmm. I'm also thinking about inviting him of 
if you invited in particular one of their reporters of if you want to talk to us about this. Yeah. I I, report on from there. Right? Yeah. I hope so. Just did a like yeah, just like that draft uh flyer you had, I mean that's kind of good to go. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I've, got, I've got a little bit of space in our paper on campus. The next time we go to press is tomorrow and then after that we go to press after the um after the training because we've got an academic break, so I just want to get all the information okay. tonight. Okay. That's cool. right. That would be great. great. Thank you. All the students are out of town then, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But well, there's a lot that live out. locally and the professors and staff. Yeah, we'll all be out from the 23rd to the 29th, but we'll be back on the 7th. Okay. Oh, okay. So great. We'll have a full week to read the paper. Perfect. Okay. Because we put something on the library, you know, when you walk in, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was another thing I had. Yeah, exactly. Kim was uh, print some of these flyers or posters. I was looking at some of the posters that other communities have made that um, of her of her workshops, and they typically have like a picture of her and then sort of the description and the time and event, which is pretty easy to whip out if we wanted to do something like that. Okay. Something a little. I, I'd be happy to do that. If you could, yeah. that would be really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Does the presenter do any advertising outside of this area? That's a good no, question. She, she does not. Okay. Uh, I had that conversation with her, and okay. that uh, she is she leaves the promotion of it mm -hmm. up to us. Mm -hmm. Do we want people from outside of area? Are you thinking that's a good thing or not? I'm right. thinking that anybody that gets uh, benefits from this, no matter where they live, it's useful. Another idea is then put Yeah, if, um, I, yeah, I think everyone's invited. So, sure, absolutely. It's just a matter of. Really circulate to yeah. 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 And I have seen uh, before now, you can uh, advertise herself, whoever she contracted with did, because I've seen uh, Facebook events for this exact workshop. Or yeah. Yeah, right. The um, Kellogg, uh, the the oh, yeah. library in Montpelier, yes. and yeah, 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 yeah. Do attendees need to RSVP? Anybody? It is helpful if they RSVP, but it's not necessary. What's a good contact? Uh, my email, the TOJ administrator at townofjohnson.com. Uh, we would like to have a some idea of how many people we're going to have, but we're not not ticketed or anything. It's whoever comes, but. Uh. Well, again, on that on the Facebook event, people are going to say interested or going, so you get a rough idea. Yeah, we'll get a few from that, a few by email. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's not it's not a ticketed event. We don't really care exactly, but. Uh, it will help for planning purposes if we have a rough idea of how many people are coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All I think set. we have a plan of action here. Good. Yes. Yeah, so. Any old business? Anything anybody want to bring up? We're going to move to executive session in a few minutes. Can I just ask, with the, 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 did the go have anything to do with the one that by on the team, or is it that way? Say again. An old business that has gravel pit. Our, our gravel, gravel pit. pit. Uh, the, the current existing gravel pit. Its lifespan is quickly dwindling. I'd actually, real quick, make a recommendation that we, there's this section on the administrator of your report, Brian, this is old business. Yes. And I think our list of priorities sort of supersedes that. And I'm, I'm wondering if just strike this and come up with something better from our list of priorities. Just strike that and use our list of priorities. It doesn't have to be listed every month, I don't think. Okay. A recommendation. Hey, I just remember yeah. the one thing about the flyer for the uh, training. You, you know, it's implicit, explicit bias, but, but then that last hour is going to be on bystander interventions and microaggressions.
expressions. Yes. If that could somehow make it into the text, I think the, I think that's important. Okay. That's, uh, I'll revisit the text on that. Yeah, would you? Yeah. Um, that's not going to order. Or do we want to focus on consistent messaging? Because for Rebecca to get into basic medicine, I'm going to need to send that tonight. So I'm not going to have time to revisit the text before I send it to Rebecca. And you made those corrections? I've made the prior corrections, but like what you're bringing up right now, I, I don't. So what do we think? Do we want more consistency or do we want a little bit more complete for things besides basement medicine. Yeah. I think besides, especially since the kids aren't going to be here, you know, it matters as much. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think. Students, students will at least be in town. Yeah. Break is this coming Monday. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.